Yo, what's happening YouTubers, gamers and hobbyists and it's episode 2 of Q&S and I'm actually filming this way before you see it probably probably I say because uh, the next two weeks are Easter holidays so my daughter will be home from school which will mean it will be a little bit harder for me to get certain videos done because you, you know kids right, you know there's always some big uh, drama going on about something uh, you know we've run out of butter major catastrophe um, but yeah I want to grab my other sheet so I was kind of surprised by the response um, pleasantly surprised by the you know the, the great response from you guys for answering my question so I thought I can film this earlier and if obviously if anybody gets puts more comments on before oh, excuse me if anybody puts more comments on before this one is uploaded then um, I'll just tag them onto the end of, or onto the beginning of episode three then just do a quick recap but anyway enough of that um, so I asked you guys and I was speaking to specifically the GW players. If you could have just one model updated and given a makeover by GW, then what would it be? And I think I said one or two models. Um, and so Nick Beer said, there's some interesting ones here. Because I said um, Mephiston and Space Marine bikes. Yeah, I said... Can I find some? So I said Mephisto, because I, I, I think he, he needs um, a bit of an update. So I tried to pose I tried to pose him a bit differently there with his sword hand and stuff. Just to make it a bit different. But anyway, so that. And um, you know. The Space Marine by oh, we've all seen these, right? So yeah. Um, Eric Beer says, um, this is easy for me, Eldar Warp Spiders, and hopefully, I'll put a picture up now, so hopefully now you can see them, yeah, he says, I like classic minis, but this unit has so much potential for some great minis, now I agree there, looking at it, um, I, I don't know the background of Eldar Warp Spiders, but um, um, for me, when I first saw that, I thought I was expecting to look a little bit more like spiders, um, without knowing the background behind it. So you have to forgive me. You know, have they been mutated by the warp in some way? Uh, and if so, then yeah, I, I would expect you know maybe have extra arms or something. Yeah, you know, more more than what they got, or, or to look more. Almost tyranny. Almost maybe. I don't know. Um, but yes, they do have the potential. If if that is the case with them, they they do look like they could be so much more because they look not unlike regular guys to me. But you know, Remco Bajia says Space Marine Scout Squad could use some love, and I agree with the biker. You should all know the Space Marine Scout Squad. Hopefully, again, put a picture up there now. So, hopefully, you can see that. Um, so, yeah, you agree with the biker. So, that's interesting. It, it does look very 80s, that biker. And, and as for the Space Marine Scouts, um, I've got some, but they're over there. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's a case of. Um, just doing re, re, redoing the poses or just adding more poses I think a lot of these minis could be just revamped by doing different poses for them or making them more uh, versatile in their poses that would help a lot of them so yeah I mean, it depends how you paint them I mean I started off painting my scout squad 
I wanted them to be blood angels, I think. And I thought, no, I want them to be ultramarines. And I thought, do you know what? I'm just going to paint them a generic colour, and then they can be used for any faction. Got to do these things when you're on a limited budget. But yeah, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I've done. Gotham Arm Service says, Sisters of Battle Immolator. So once again, hopefully you can now see that. Has the potential for all kinds of awesome shenanigans, especially a forge well pimped it up. And it's not just the Immolator, is it? Uh, Sisters of Battle, they seriously need updating. I mean, big style, massive. So not not just the the emulator, but the whole range of Sisters of Battle, I think. Um, but I know we're talking about that is one for you. So you're clearly a are you a Sisters of Battle player? I mean, I'm not. But if they revamp the whole range, I would be because I think they've got a great background behind them. I think I think they've got so much potential for cool fluff. And some really fun games, and that, and that would be that would swing it for me. Start with the Codex, of course. Um, yeah, but that tank could do it looking a little more, I don't know, different to the other like rhinos and um, predators and well, with that that ilk of transport. And of course, get them done in nice or resin or plastic um, would help. Von Urker says, sorry I'm I am a historical gamer, but neat idea. Well don't worry Von Urker, um, we'll be doing all sorts, hopefully, in this series now, because this I think this has got the potential to really take off, so fingers crossed on that one. WG Revival says, Balthazar Gelt from the WFB Empire range. We have a few stinkers in the Empire, but Gelt gets more than most stinks more than most. <laughs> hopefully you can see him now yeah so he's what's he on like a sort of pegasus type thing um yeah that's a strange one that i mean um if you're a fantasy player then and you're stuck with a certain model well, with anything if you're stuck with a certain model and you really want a new one this here's is my view on this is my view on it I get my words out today, I don't know why. But anyway, this is my view on it. It makes you wonder whether Games Workshop purposely delay updating certain models to see if players and hobbyists do some awesome conversion work to get what they want. I mean, I myself am planning on doing a a Tyranid conversion um, to see what people want and then you know mold, mold a, uh, do a certain model according to that or along the lines of that maybe or maybe they just don't give us stuff and it just happens to work out that way but there's some awesome converters out there I mean I'm not a great converter but I want to have a go at it you know um, and here's something I mean, like Tyranids. I, I play Tyranids uh, for one of my armies, and they don't have much answer to armor. So I thought, for fun games between just between friends, do you know what? I'm gonna make a new Tyranid monster. I'm gonna have a new unit. I don't know what I'll call it yet, but it's gonna have my own special rules, and it's gonna be able to deal with armor, no problem. Why? Because I can. Obviously, you can't play that in other games, but for me, that's going to be cool, and I'm going to do it, and I'm going to enjoy making the model, and I will, if it works out, I will do videos on it. Then you never know. Hopefully, someone in GW can spot spot this, and other people doing the same sort of thing, and say, "Do you know what? That's not a bad idea. Let's make a model based on something like that, but we'll call it something else." And uh, but yeah. But just have a, a, a vague link tied to the undercarriage of uh, their new model. But Balthazar Gelt, yeah. I haven't actually read through these yet, but.
because obviously I'm putting the, uh, sorry, <laughs> this reason in the next one. Yeah, I haven't actually read through these yet, so obviously I'm putting the um, pictures up after, so I'm hoping, when I say hopefully there's a picture up now, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to find one and stick up there. That, uh, so it's all on the fly a bit here. Anyway, moving on. Robert Chisholm says, the model that needs an update is the Tau XV8 Crisis Battle Suit. Do you want to gain, I don't know, I, I don't know what this one is, but after I finish recording, I'll hopefully go along and find that and find a picture of it. So if I have, if I can, should be a picture up of it now. Um, it goes on to say that the kit is maybe 15 years old now and is showing its age. For a second model, I'd say the Eldar Jet Bike. Okay, I'm going to have to follow those as well. Put that up now. Alright. The Jet Bike itself is fine. The pilot is the old second edition Guardian style helmet and is in a terrible static pose. Well, yeah, that, that would be a bit annoying. Um, not too difficult to um, convert that, though, I suppose. And uh, I expect to see some conversions as I'm looking for these pictures. But yeah. Um, hmm. It's alright when I know the models because I can talk about them. But I, I don't know. I, I, you know, I don't know these. So. Um, but if you've got a. I mean, the only towel I know is my Riptide. But I haven't even unwrapped yet. XB104 Riptide Battlesuit. Well, I imagine it would have look similar to that, but it'd be smaller, that's all. Um, towel. Yeah, well. Maybe make them a little, I don't know, a bit more rounder, perhaps. Sleeker. Like they, they changed the look of cards. They used to be all square, didn't they, years ago? Well, I did over here in England. Yes, maybe do that. Um, yeah, and that's the second. Is that the second um, Eldar one? Yeah, so come on, GW, sort these Eldar out. Uncta says specifically Space Wolves Rune Priest in Terminator armour. I much more like what they've done with the armour of Najal. The Rune Priest got these huge symbols just glued on top of the armour, or so it seems. Okay, I honestly don't know anything about that one. I'm going to try and find a picture of that, and I should put that one up now, if I can. Obviously, if not, you're going to see me do a funny face. Yes, in general, quite a bit of the old school uh, Metal HQ models with a very static pose that they just recast in fine cast these days instead of remodeling them. Yeah, I agree. They should when they re when they revamp something, when they do do it, they should they should really go to town on it. Um, and I don't understand why they do it some things and not others. It's bizarre. It really is. But I, I mean, I don't know the, the what goes on with the process of mod model making, obviously. But, um, mm. yeah, yeah, you'd, you'd think instead of, I mean, I was happy a long time ago to, um, when, I, when I was getting my fist on, I thought, mm. it's sword bent. I thought, fine cast, just, you know, give me metal. So I'm looking, I've, I never got one, but I was I was looking for a time on eBay. Excuse me, on eBay for a metal version. It's way a bit sturdier. I thought metal HQs are fine. Troops, a stick with a plastic. Um, but um, yeah, if they if they redid him in plastic, that would be sturdier than fine cast, wouldn't it? I, I'm not a fan of fine cast. I've got to say, I, I just don't like it. Not for. Um, little models and swords and spears and things like that. I mean, they just bend and break. It's like rubbish. Uh, I know metal can be just as bad with the breaking of spears and arrows and things like that, but um, I don't know. I think plastic is the way to go. It's easier to fix. 
All right, tabletop painting says Ragnar Blackmane. That rings a bell. Space Marine of some sort, I think, if I remember rightly. Ragnar Blackmane definitely needs an update. After that, I would have to say some of the Phoenix Lords could really use some updating. Hmm. I'll try and find pictures of those. I don't know either of those. But if I can find any of those, I shall put those up now. So Ragnar Blackmane. Uh, if I remember right, that's a guy with uh, like a shaved head and a long mane of hair on top of his head, flying down. But yeah, okay, that's cool. <clears throat> Mr. Super Chippy 74 says, I'm not a 40k player, but have bought some stuff because my son likes it and he wants me to play with him. But my limited knowledge and what I've seen, I think they should change the Space Marine range and not just the figure. So you're talking about the whole range. The reason for this is that they are all the wrong scale. If they are supposed to be the eight foot human elite, why not model them like it? I don't know, I think they just... I don't know, I think they aired on that one. But um, now they're just kind of stuck with it. But let's be honest, Warhammer, nothing's to scale. Oh dear, uh, excuse me, sorry. Ugh. All right, Lone Ranger. It says, I'd love a new Cypher model. It's years old, and I think it has the potential to be really cool if done right. So, I know Cypher, and I know the model. Putting a picture up, hopefully now, for being well. If I can't get these pictures up, I'm gonna look a real idiot. But, um, yeah. Cypher, yeah, because he's got like, a cool backstory, hasn't he, behind him, and, uh, Yes, I think ones like that could definitely do with an update. Uh, Pibacass, Pibacass, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. I have an epic army, but have never owned any other GW stuff. Okay. The Jankmaster says, I'll be back with number two after some more thought. So that one might go on the next episode, perhaps. But, but but Kassaro Khan of the White Kassaro Khan of the White Scars. Uh, I don't know him. Not a terrible model, but um, he's on foot. Come on, GW. Well, I know a lot of White Scars. I see. I I don't know much about them, but I've seen a lot of them on their little bikes and that. Uh, are they kind of like the Raven Wing? I don't know. Uh, but yeah. Maybe have one. Maybe they should have one on a bike and one on foot. I don't know. Or just do something else with him. Jason Brown, the line of troll models for use in um, WHFB Warriors of Chaos, and then in brackets and others, I suppose. Incredibly old sculpts, incredibly overpriced. I don't, know, I don't know those either, so if I can find a picture, I will put that up. Um, line of troll models. Well, fantasy seems to be getting some love now, doesn't it? So hopefully, you know, you, you, they'll they'll do that. Um, I mean, I know GW is a big company, but the game and the hobby is massive. Um, I know it's a niche hobby, niche, niche hobby, niche market, but in that niche, it's massive, and I think it's um, it's getting bigger and bigger. Um, so they've got to limit their what they update. I mean, at the moment they seem to be updating all the rules and codexes and things like that, which is cool, and I'm all for that. Get that sisters of battle codex out. Come on, um, but yeah, they're doing that, and you know they're, they're bringing out new models as well. And yeah, we can only hope. Fingers crossed, can't we, to get get what we need. Oh, von Erker again. Um, if you do bolt action, I am in. Perhaps one forty eight versus one fifty six. Obviously talking about scale there. Uh, so so what are you? 
mean, would you rather play bolt action in 148 or 156? Some people play it in 15mm, don't they? And, um, well, you play it any scale you want, I suppose, as long as you get the measurements right accordingly. And that's all the responses I've got at the moment. Uh, like I say, if I get any more, I'll put them at the beginning of the next episode. It's been very enjoyable, and it's been great seeing all your um, your answers there, what models you'd like um, repost. Because there's so many, I mean, I, I just plucked two, but it was hard to narrow them down out of all the ones I've seen. Uh, it's it can be disappointing when you you read about a certain character and, or in 40k and you think oh, I want to get that model and you look it up and you think oh is that it oh, well I could have done better than that um, uh, a lot of them look fine to me from what you say but then I haven't been in the hobby that long and particularly the um, the, the uh, towel one 15 years old that's quite a long time um, so. So yeah, I can totally understand. I can totally understand uh, why you want a new model, and quite rightly so. But um, fingers crossed that we all get the ones we want. Ain't gonna happen anytime soon, I don't suppose. But that's that question out of the way. So, what happens now? Well, I ask, I ask you another question. Um, so I want to make this question, because uh, I know we've got historical gamers as well. Um, it's about game in general, more generalistic. So what game are you currently, well, no, not game you're currently playing. What is, here's my question. What is your most recent game you're into and what drew you to it? Okay, so what's the most recent game you've gotten into and what drew you to it? For me, the most recent game I got into was Zombicide, as you may know from some of my other videos. What drew me to it was because I could see potential in it, <sighs> because it's not really a board game, it's not really a tabletop game, it's somewhere in between. The poten I could see the potential to get the whole family involved and I was right. It, it's worked out brilliantly for me. Um, it's got miniatures, great. You've got a board with, all right, it's 2D, it's a 2D board, but hey, it's a start. And you've got, you got miniatures, you've got dice, you've got rules, but it's easy. That's what drew me to it. Um, the ease of the rules, I suppose, after watching a few vids on YouTube, and I thought this will do for me, for myself and my family, um, a good way to get them involved in it. So, yeah, who doesn't like zombies, right? Everybody likes zombies. Um, so I can't, I can't say bolt action because that's not the most recent one. But uh, yeah, so zombie side, ease, ease of the rules, and to get my family involved, we can all or play the game together and so yeah so what game are you most recently involved in and why what drew you to it I'm interested to know what drew you to the game I'm hoping to discover some new games out there that I've not heard of yet uh, it could be anything board game tabletop game whatever a game historical science fiction whatever doesn't have to be a new game. It can even be an out-of-date game that they don't make anymore. I, I want to know, but what if that's your recent, the most recent game you've been you've been into? I want to know. So I'll see you guys on the next video. Sorry, I'm a bit. Blah, sometimes I can be a bit like that. Apologies for that. Stay healthy and happy gaming, everyone.